Hi there, my name is Barbara McVeigh and I'm with Marin Television here in San Rafael, California. I am so honored to be with two gentlemen today to talk about a very valuable heritage that in history right here in Marin County at the top of Mount Tam. Uh, the West Point Inn has been known to be um, a location where bikers have met, hikers have met, and it goes back over a hundred years to talk about how that meeting place has cultivated um, a connection for generations and continues to do so. And there's so much more to be shared. Um, I'm here today with uh, David Doerr. He is with the, um, the West Point Inn and he's the head innkeeper, which must be a load of fun. David, I can't wait to talk to you about all the work that you've been doing there to keep that heritage site going. And Fred Runner, who has been the historian of the location of the West Point Inn, um, volunteer and so much more. So welcome David and Fred to the program. Thanks Barbara. Doing this. Now Thanks. I have such fond memories of the West Point Inn cycling up that railroad grade hour after hour to arrive at the West Point in at the beautiful tables you have outside that building and was always greeted with somebody there with a glass of lemonade or some sort of warmth. Um, how, how have you gotten to know the West Point Inn and, and gotten involved and why is it important to us today? Um, David, maybe I can start with you. Mine started with uh, Boy Scouts. I was a uh, volunteer leader with the Scouts for 30 years. And one of my Scouts about 11 years ago, uh, wanted to go on a, a hike before going off to college. And he asked me if I would go along. I said, sure, twist my arm. Um, long story short, we made, hit various trails and ended up crossing paths with West Point Inn. Now I understand I grew up in Fairfax and I know the east side of the mountain like the back of my hand. I saw the end. I had no idea um, what it was or whether we even had any business being there. So we continued with our hike. I guess about two and a half weeks later, Fred was looking for somebody to sand and finish the floors. He reached out to uh, Richard Torney. Richard, uh, he works with uh, the Ross Valley Historical Society. He's also a building contractor, as am I. And so he reached out, Richard reached out to me, brought me up to the end, and literally three weeks after I first saw the end, I'm in there sanding the floors. And I've been there pretty much ever since. But what year was pictures. that then? How, how, when was that? Uh, 2000, it was either 2009 or 2010. Yeah. Um, so actually, I actually uh, ran into a gentleman there who at the time was uh, the head innkeeper, uh, a guy named Pat Williams. He was a uh, retired San Anselmo fire. And Pat and his wife and their two girls and my wife and two girls actually spent time together at the Court of Madera Twin Cities Co-op Nursery when our girls were itty bitty. And our paths separated and came back together up at the end. Wow. Pat's up there this week. It's his, uh, his week as innkeeper up there. That's amazing. Now, now Fred, what about you? How, uh, now, how, I, I see this beautiful image of a train behind you. I also understand you're, as a historian, you've been very involved in conservation of, of uh, the history of West Point Inn. Could you tell me more? Sure. Um, I fell in love with the uh, West Point Inn back in the 1980s. I had some friends invited me up there for the Christmas party in the 1980s. And uh, I'd never been before. They said, you're going to love it. And I said, all right. So I went there and couldn't believe my eyes. Um, professionally, I work in, in film, uh, film and TV. So I'm a storyteller. Uh, my actual, I'm actually a techni technically I'm a sound man. Um, I record the dialogue that happens in front of a camera and things like that. Um, but the, well, you know, by extension, it's a, it's a process of telling stories. And when I got to the West Point Inn, um, the building in the middle of nowhere didn't make sense to me. So I asked, what is this, what is this about? And, and I found out that this 
dirt road that surrounded the building had actually had railroad tracks and steam engines on it. And there was a stagecoach there too. And I just, whoa, wait a second, what is all this? <laughs> so, um, so that was the beginning of a long love affair. And I started digging into the stories and, and, uh, and that's how I got my start. Um, I was lucky enough to meet um, a guy who had lived at the West Point Inn as a little boy, moved in at the age of four in 1919, and his folks ran the inn until uh, 1924. And he's the only person that I ever met that could tell you what it was like when a steam train left West Point Inn. He said the whole inn trembled as the engine pulled away. Um, his name was Ralph Cleway. Um, his folks ran the inn. His younger brother, Gerald, was born when they were there. Um, I also uh, became friends with the last living crewman who worked on the Mountain Railroad, a guy named Bill Provines. And between all these people, I was able to get a pretty good insight to what that era was about. And then talking to people at, at West Point about how that all evolved um, during World War II and after. And so there were just, there were so many stories um, and every one of them was wonderful. Um, so I, and I happened to be fairly good at remembering them. So. Uh, so that was the beginning of of my relationship with the West Point Inn. And the West Point Inn was surely the the, the getaway <clears throat> location for those in San Francisco. I mean, it really gave you a sense of going to the countryside at that time, right? Well, even today, but from the city, and it was quite the the journey. Um, well, yeah, it was absolutely, and and, and actually, in, in its first days, um, it was primarily just a bit of hospitality. Because when the railroad was first built in 1896, West Point Inn didn't exist yet. Um, eight years later, they built the inn at, at the western end of the railroad, which was why it was called West Point. Um, and it was a place where the steam trains of the railroad met a stagecoach that could take you down to Stinson Beach. And the stagecoach was a test drive to see if there was enough business there to um, warrant laying tracks down to Stinson Beach. And that business opportunity never really panned out. It was a, a venture that had been started by the president of the railroad, Sidney Cushing, and his friend, William Kent, two important people in the history of, very important people in the history of the mountain and Muir Woods and all of Marin Wilderness. Um, and in 1915, the stagecoach shut down and the inn was closed up and it seemed like the inn didn't have a future. Um, and then the hikers of the mountain who had fallen in love with it over the time that the stagecoach ran, all got together and convinced the railroad to reopen the inn and and the hikers then began running the inn and it's been that way ever since. So it's so, very much a driven by community by volunteers yep. primarily. That's yep. amazing. Yep. And is it open also to the public without being a member of the inn? Um, yes, yes um, uh, there was a, a period where um, uh, where uh, the inn became rather private and exclusive. The inn shunned visitors, uh, but the water district uh, changed that in the late 70s and uh, it's welcomed visitors ever since. Um, and in fact, this depends on visitors for for the money that it, that it makes. Right. So um, David, you're the head innkeeper uh, and welcome people to the location of the I'm sure these last months, it's been quite the challenge. Uh, you've been closed, I'm sure, uh, for most of the months. Uh, I understand you're just opening now. Um, but before we talk about the COVID time, what has it been like being the innkeeper up there? And why do you think it's important for people to maintain this heritage? I'm a people person. I enjoy meeting new people all the time. Uh, I've met and made new friends up at the inn, uh, some members, some non-members. Um, but ultimately, it, it's just been a real good experience. And I think what the inn has to offer people is it, it's a place that they can come and just, you know, get off the trail. Uh, we normally have a small snack bar and um, uh, drinks uh, that they can purchase. Uh, it's also a place that if you've been injured on the mountain, uh, all the innkeepers are first aid certified. Uh, two of our innkeepers are paramedics in San Francisco. One is a uh, retired um, operating room assistant. So we've dealt with everything from uh, sprained ankles to heart, heart attacks. 
I think it was three years ago. Uh, we just got done with our New Year's Eve celebration and pretty much everybody had left. There was, I think, Jan and my wife up there and this guy came in in cardiac arrest and we were able to do what it took until uh, uh, the fire department and state parks were able to get him uh, transported over to the East Bay. So it's sort of, a, I'd like to call it a port in the storm. There's been many nights where I get a knock on the door from people that have overshot their uh, clock. It's now dark out, they don't know where they're at. They saw this light on this dark mountain and followed it and came to the end. And for the most part, we offer them a couch that they can spend the night on unless they absolutely have to leave. And then we'll end up reaching out to state parks and uh, we'll get them transported off the mountain there. It's quite the oasis in what is still quite a wild area. Um, that it is. A lot of wildlife from deer to a uh, mountain lion, lynx. My favorite is uh, the coyotes that frequent the inn. And I had, um, we built a new ADA cabin in, Fred, was that 2017? 16, I think. Okay. So we got this done, and one of my Boy Scouts is a, um, he's Eagle, but he also has muscular dystrophy. He's also the head of the state of California Department of Emergency Services for people with special needs. So they came up, and um, he came up with his two little girls, and one, I saw this coyote out on the road, and I pulled his daughters out, and I said, do you want to see my girlfriend? And they're going, oh, look at that. And they're checking out this coyote down on lower railroad grade. And she goes, well, what's your girlfriend's name? I says, oh, she doesn't have a name. And this little girl goes, I'm going to call her Trixie. So <laughs> Trixie, she comes, if, if you're lucky enough, you'll see Trixie cruising the roads. Uh, it's pretty special. And, and again, the times that I have visited the inn and, and was kindly uh, shown and toured inside, it feels timeless. It feels like a portal of time. You literally walk into a space that has not changed in how many years? A hundred years? 116. Oh. Yeah. You know, so, part of that is due to Fred and a few others that have worked diligently to maintain that atmosphere of the inn. You know, there's yes, been a lot of proposed changes and stuff, and for the most part, the inn is what it was back in 1904. The only thing one missing of the things that I, is what you see is Fred. Well, that's another story, the, the number nine story, um, part of a nonprofit that's restoring the only Tamil Pai steam engine at Friends of Number Nine. But that's um, another story, which is that, that the inn is remarkable in that um, it still uses gas lights. It's a different kind of gas light than it used when it first opened up. In those days, they were acetylene lights. But how many places can you go in the Bay Area that use gas lights? Where could you get that experience except at West Point Inn? And then more recently, we, uh, we had to do some rehab on our main fireplace in the front room, the parlor. Um, yeah, we had a little chimney fire, so that had to be completely rehabbed. And uh, we were able to find a, an outfit that uh, had had experience, a long story, I, uh, somebody wanted to put a, a stove in that fireplace and make it more modern. And we were able to stop that from happening. So I was able to find a company that, that rehabs fireplaces to keep them original, but improves how they work. And uh, they came up from Los Angeles and spent four days um, taking out the old bad stuff and putting, completely revamping the inside of the fireplace in a way you couldn't see it but the outside was still the same fireplace that people had known since 1904. So if you just came in today, you would have the same experience somebody had in 1904 and never know that, um, that the fireplace had been made better. Um, the company that, that I had talked to in the pathway there talked, we originally that we, people had talked about capping up, you know, the people nowadays were capping fireplaces and, and we didn't want that because, you know, on, the, on a wet, rainy winter day, what's better than sitting at the West Point Inn than, you know, by a warm, crackling fire? Um, anyway, the, the conversation led to a company that had just finished re rehabbing fireplaces on Civil War battlefield homes. 
And I said, now we're talking. That's exactly what we're looking for here. And that's how we got to where we are now at the West Point Inn with that rehab fireplace that you can enjoy on a cold winter day. It's been an amazing tribute to the amount of work that volunteers have put into this location, um, a testament of love, of heritage, community as well. How does this inn bring community together? What are some examples? Well, folks like yourself come pedaling by and they, they'll stop in at the inn, get refreshments, you uh, use the facilities there and ultimately ask how they can um, get involved. And uh, every month we have a work party. And what we try to do is qualify the volunteers to see what their skill sets are. Uh, I've had five and six year olds cleaning windows. Uh, we've got one gentleman that his specialty is doors and windows. So we save all the door and window repairs for when Nigel comes up there and again, we get a lot of folks in there with a lot of skill sets and everybody has a good time. We feed them well. They work three of those uh, work parties or three pancake breakfasts and that qualifies them to get on the waiting list for membership. I believe our membership is capped at 600, but there's a, a slow attrition to that. So I think the average wait time on that list is uh, about a year, give or take. If you're really lucky and you come by at the right time, David will be baking bread. He's an artisan bread baker and does just extraordinary you, work. Yeah, you bet. Thank yeah, you. If I'm up at the end and I know you're calling, I'll answer the <laughs> the West Point and I'll say it's the West Point Bakery. <laughs> okay, yep. you're making this more interesting. <laughs> Fresh bread. We've got mm -hmm. the coyotes, we've got the community, we've got a heritage location that has not changed in over a hundred years. I mean, this yeah, is we've... such a special place. And what's so amazing to me is how many people don't know about it, right? Maybe that's Seems a good like a lot. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, you have to I find- I up in Fairfax. <laughs> There's gotta be part in... finding the right people because such a place like this really takes that kind of commitment to understanding and, perhaps respecting the heritage and understanding that it takes not just your money, but it takes your skills. As you were talking, David, about um, people come to give what they can, not just money, but their skills as well. Would that be true? I mean, is that a big part of how you operate? It's what's unique about the West Point Inn. It attracts people that fall in love with the place. I'm and they'll come I'm great distances. Example, come great Fred's distances to. They'll come great and distances to work on that place. Uh, heritage, and ask Fred what he does once a year up there. Fred, what do you do it's, once a year up there? <laughs> well, we 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 have a program that we call Heritage Night. Um, Pete Martin used to run that. He's a retired fireman who's also on our board of directors. But uh, anyway, it's stories about the inn and and uh, the extraordinary history of Mount Tamalpais. Uh, which includes everything from the creation of Muir Woods to um, one of the most astonishing stories at West Plain is that there's a cabin there built by a man who survived the Titanic. So in 2018, which was in fact the centenary of the opening of the honeymoon cabin, we told the story of Dr. Washington Dodge and his experience on the Titanic with his wife and son. The three of them all survived the Titanic. Um, it's one of the few happy stories of the Titanic, but we also had a, a world-renowned Titanic historian who knew Titanic survivors, and he came from Southern California, um, and we talked about a woman that he knew named Ruth Becker, who happened to share Lifeboat 13 with Dr. Dodge, um, and Ken became a really good friend of hers, and, uh, and if you ever saw the Jim Cameron movie, uh, Titanic, where uh, there's a, the old woman that's in his movie uh, says, um, do you want to hear my story or not? And everybody on, on board the ship says, well, of course. And she says, you could still smell the fresh paint. Well, that was a, a, a sentence that, that uh, Ruth Becker, this young lady who was 12 years old in Lifeboat 13 with Dr. Dodge, remembered when she was having a talk with, Ken, with my friend uh, Ken Marshall one night. 
You could still smell the fresh paint. And when I heard that in the theater, I just lost it because I knew that was Ruth. <laughs> Um, but that's the kind of stories that you know that we like to tell that that you know really make the end special. That's a that's a terrific one. Um, there's a story about you know William Kent and and he and his wife creating Muir Woods just before it was going to get logged out and turned into a reservoir, um, and the Mountain Railroad bringing the first tourists to Muir Woods, including John Muir himself, and then Kent being part of creating the National Park Service, an essential co-author. And using the Mountain Railroad as, as a sales tool to help sell his congressional friends who came to the 1915 World's Fair. The West Point Inn was the place that they, that Kent and Cushing helped create because they had speculative land deals on the beaches, you know, down at Stinson Beach and all that stuff. That didn't quite work out, but their next project was Muir Woods, and that's been a huge success. It's one of the most popular parks in the country. So that's definitely success. And West Point's been part of all that. Wasn't that first engine down in Demir Woods uh, with a bunch of school kids? Yes. Very good, David. Yeah, 1907, uh, they had uh, finished the tracks into, into Redwood Canyon. It wasn't Muir Woods yet. And uh, Roy Graves uh, brought the very first, uh, Roy Graves, who was a fireman on that first train, told how the first load of passengers into Muir Woods was actually a group of school kids coming to find out what Birch and Redwoods were all about in 1907 you know, the, the Mountain Railroad was making wilderness accessible to, to kids that couldn't have gotten to the wilderness. And they were also supportive of hiking groups on the mountain, which, you know, West Point ties in with perfectly. There's a tremendous amount of great stories and West Point is, is at the hub of all of them. Very inspiring. We've had a number of challenging months, I guess about seven challenging months now with uh, COVID and the lockdowns and shutdowns and everything. Now, though the inn has been strong, I guess, is, maybe you might find a different word for that, but it's been going. It has been unstoppable for a century. How have you been managing these past months? Carefully. Uh, my hat's off to our past boards. Every year our board changes. Uh, they had the wisdom to bankroll a certain amount of money to make sure that we made it through any potential lean times. Little did they know that we've got, we're coming up on almost a year. Um, and that's why I started uh, the GoFundMe page, was because we're about halfway through our reserves right now. And I'm very grateful at this point, uh, the GoFundMe is a, uh, generated about $11,000 um, and I'm extending an invitation to those uh, folks out there that know of the end, would like to know of the end, uh, to check out the GoFundMe page, West Point Inn, uh, or they can go to our website and we have a, uh, a spot on our website where you can donate directly to the end. And again, you run as a nonprofit organization we are a nonprofit. Nonprofit, uh, but it's open to members, but also to non-members, to the general right. public, for overnight stays in this very rustic uh, and very off the beaten track. I mean, you really have to make an effort to get there, which is quite quite special. Mm -hmm. Your, um, it's a, it's again an, an oasis is a, a, how I describe it but it's more than that it's um it's incredible heritage right here at the top of Mount Tam it's the Very crown beautiful. jewel of Marin it's what it's the crown jewel of Marin crown jewel of Marin well what's really interesting about your location that there are a couple of other inns on top of Mount Tam uh the tourist club I'm thinking of and the California Alpine Lodge and what's really unique about all of these they're, they're all different, but it's based on this interesting principle of, of people coming together to create something and to keep it going. It's not about just pay and, and take. It's really about engaging and creating. Would you, would you agree with that? Would that be how you would describe your, your in? To a degree, yeah. But again, look at the history of the Alpine Club and of the Tourist Club and of uh, the West Point Inn and what used to be the Tavern on Top. It was a good place that you could come into from San Francisco, 
spend the night and it, it was a good location that from there you could hit uh, many different trailheads and get that I think the Japanese referred to it as nature bathing you know when I find myself getting a little too crazy I just go out and take a walk and it settles things down nicely I, I have to just say my experience with the California Alpine Club, because I had been a member for years. What intrigued me the most was the age and the um, the age of most of the members, uh, mm -hmm. who are mostly, at least with that one club, over 60 years old. I mean, they're really running the show and keeping it going for the next generation, which I just thought, you know what, my hat's off. And I think the same is true with uh, your organization. Um, but I have to say, I've never ha I have had a hard time keeping up with this age group in terms of their work ethic and their hiking ability <laughs> as well. A 92-year-old Alice, she whipped me on that trail. I tell you, when we went hiking up in those mountains, which was a reminder of these amazing trails that we have up there, uh, just filled with oak trees and redwood trees and coyote bush and. I mean, it's just, it's so, so natural and so untouched. You really do feel like you're away from it all. You know, there's not much of a reason to travel too far when you see what we have right above there on the mountain. So um, Fred, just one last thing for you in terms yeah. of history. What, what would you like to see going forward with the inn and stewardship going forward? What, what, what's, your, what's your hope and your dream? Well, we felt uh, the inn has been on the National Register since 2011. Um, was proud to get it on there. Um, it's a, it's an incomparable place, I think, uh, for getting a sense of what the past was like. It's so little changed since it was first built um, that you can soak up this piece of the past, and that's always the, the challenge that we, you know, try to. Um, fulfill there is to keep it honest and, and part of the past and so that when something breaks somebody just doesn't run down to Home Depot and get a new doorknob they actually get a doorknob that feels like it belongs there um, so and that would be my hope for the future was that people would share that sense of pride in this unique piece of the past and keep it honest and and real beautifully put and, and David What's your hope and what do you feel is the calling right now to people he, who either may know and have experienced the West Point Inn or might not know about it? I pray that COVID gets behind us and we're able to move forward with the inn, providing that opportunity for people to come up experience the end, feel, how do I want to put it? There's atmosphere in there that you just, atmosphere and history in that end. I would love to have been a fly on the wall through, you know, through history, just to see what's gone on in the past there. Um, I think we are in a good position to survive this and to provide that experience for our members and uh, the public at large. We invite anybody and everybody to come and experience the end. Come sit on our decks, um, spend a night up there, bring friends, family, school groups, youth groups, whatever it takes. And we'll if people stay would worth We'll make your stay uh, memorable. And if people would like to contribute to your funding, how may they do that once again? I have a GoFundMe page. Uh, if you go to GoFundMe and just type in West Point in, it should pop up. Um, you can also go to westpointin.com and we have a uh, donation button there also. Great. Is there anything else that either one of you would like to add before we I would. say goodbye? There's, there's a, a thing that comes to mind that uh, seems fitting here to a degree, which is that um, back in the middle of World War II, the inn was facing a tough time at that point too, because everybody was involved in World War II and had no time for anything else, really, except that um, the inn was no longer, became no longer commercially viable. 
so that it volunteers had to step up at that point and and begin running me in in the middle of World War II while they were trying to real, deal with running a war and all that. The man that became their president, Frank Bradley, said, we want to preserve the inn for the next generation so that they will know the pleasures we knew on the mountain. I've never heard anybody sum it up better than that. I think that's what David's project and what the inn is, is about. Beautifully put. Thank you, Fred. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting at this time right now where I think more people are valuing our local communities, right? So isn't this a calling to kind of come back to our home and to look around to see what we have that maybe we have missed and, and to really, really get to know our outdoor areas, our nature. I mean, this incredible land that we have around us that's been preserved. We're very fortunate here in Marin County. Well, again, within our innkeepers, we've got a, a, a good base of folks that know the trails, and we've had people from all over the world come in. I had a young lady who, on the internet in Beijing, China, saw the end. She said, if I'm ever in San Francisco, this is where I'm going, and boom, she was there. Um, we are, we have a new innkeeper. She's a former Mount Tam Pius Park Ranger and she literally knows Mount Tam. She's going to be a good add to our innkeeper um, staff. So there fact, are two. Be, walk <laughs> up to the end next week. You'll get to meet Rosanna. She, she's on duty next week. Fantastic. There are no excuses now to get outdoors, see what we have locally and really believe in the incredible um, heritage that we have, believe in, believe in its significance is what I mean to say. Really, we're so lucky. And I really want to thank the both of you for continuing this heritage for other people. And it's like, it's people like you who see things that maybe others have missed that keep that spirit going. And I just really want to say that that's so valuable and just thank you so much. As I, I say that as a Marin County resident and uh, and live near the mountain myself. So thank you. Well, I'd like to thank our members, our board, and the public at large, because without all the, all the above, the end wouldn't be here today. I'd like to thank 116 years worth of, of people visiting the West Point Inn for it still to be, for it, so it could still be there. Yeah. And it will continue on. Thank you so much to you, Fred Runner, um, historian, volunteer at the West Point Inn, and to you, David Doerr of the West Point Inn as the head innkeeper. I hope to see you both up on the mountain at West Point Inn. Keep in mind, if I'm up there, or if John is up there, we're the two bakers up there. <laughs> so we will be fresh bread every day. I'm smelling the bread yes, already. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you so much. And um, thank you, Barbara. I would love to have you back on Marin Television sometime soon. I would love to hear about more uh, stories and more history of Mount Tamalpais and the West Point Inn. Thank you so much. You got thank a you, good Barbara. resource in Fred. <laughs> thank you, David. You it's bet. been a pleasure. It's, it's great to be among friends. <laughs>